Hello, hello. Joseph Argis here, rulesforsuccess.com. I'm here with my special guest, Steve Gallegos. Is that correct, Steve? No, sir, but thanks no. for asking. It's Gallegos. Gallegos. In, in Gallegos. Spanish, two L's are always a Y. Yes, yes, yes. You <laughs> did actually. People, for those of us that like Mexican cuisine, we don't go into a Mexican restaurant and order tortillas. We order tortillas. <laughs> exactly. Tortillas. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. And you're, are you Latin American as your background? Is that right? Yes, sir. I was born in Chile. Born in Chile, raised in the United States. Got it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Always. I, I, thanks for connecting. Identity, who we are, is really important. I used to be Joe. I became Joseph in recent years, in the past 15 years myself. So, yeah. Steve Gallegos. Welcome, Steve. Steve and I have got to know each other the past few months. Uh, recent conversations, he's a success coach. He's regarded as America's ambassador in success. Steve Gallegos devotes his life to guiding others to experience greater self-mastery, communications mastery, relation mastery. These are the three pillars to living remarkably, a proven philosophy designed to guide you to live your life well beyond the limitations of success. Uh, Steve has learned quite a few lessons through lessons earned as a U.S. Marine Sergeant, law enforcement art officer, singer, songwriter, wow, recording artist, board certified civil trial lawyer, and published commercial photographer. Steve is on a mission to increase personal growth and prosperity of humanity so that we, we may all contribute to society at a higher level. I'm really impressed by all those career shifts. I've had a few myself, not quite to the, the extent as you. I know you bring it all together, Steve. Um, Further on his bio, through his thought-provoking and inspirational stories delivered in English and Spanish, Steve inspires his audience to shift, to, sh to, to shift their limiting beliefs and take inspired action to achieve what otherwise, otherwise seems impossible. Steve is an award-winning author, international speaker, a joint venture specialist. We have an in common president of the Stevie G Success Group a multimedia training company delivering experiential public speaking trainings for executives, entrepreneurs, and professional service providers. Steve is also served, he also serves as one of five master coaches on B Connected, that's B-E Connected, K-O-N-N-E-C-T-E-D, a global network of business professionals and entrepreneurs who are focused on creating authentic connections and business deals. So. Steve's background, that's his bio. I've gotten a chance to know Steve. We've had some amazing conversations so far. So welcome, Steve. It's a beautiful day. Um, you're happily married as well also to the woman of your dreams who I've had the opportunity of meeting also in, the, in recent months. How, how are things going out there in Texas? Uh, in in, in uh, Colorado, Colorado. Colorado, yes. But yes. you weren't mistaken about Texas because we were there right. um, probably just uh, July of, of last year, we were still in Texas. Alethea and I were living there together for about uh, 10, 11 years. Mm -hmm. And then we decided to uh, up and move to Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. And we spent six months there. And uh, then we decided to come back to the United States. And rather than go back to Texas, we say, where in the United States can we get an environment that's close to Canada with the Rocky Mountains mm -hmm. and the rivers and lakes and streams and those kinds of things? And Denver just seemed to fit the bill. So, uh, so yeah, so we've been here just before the lockdown. We got here at the end of February, a couple of weeks later, we all got locked down around the world. And so, uh, but we're, we're loving it. We're still experiencing the newness of it, right? The mountains and just, just the beauty that, that's here in uh, Colorado. I appreciate how like, adaptable you are to your surroundings, the choices you have, being flexible as far as travels, you know, to Texas, to Costa Rica, and also having a partner who shares in those passions too. You mentioned before that you're going to do a little hiking this weekend. Um, right. What's taught you? I mean, you've had some major shifts over the years, career-wise, and of course, the work you do now as a just success a coach. Just a few. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's given you the ability to be as adaptable as you, as you are, especially embracing the pivot? You're, you're a master of the pivot it's on so many levels, career-wise. Like, wow, like yeah. just, it's very expansive career background choices you've made. Thank you. Thank you for recognizing that. A lot of people indicate that, um, you know, I'm a master of reinvention. And, is, and in a sense, we all are. Or, or at least, let me say that um, we all have the opportunity to do that, but not all of us make that choice because we feel that we are limited by... I got a degree in this, and so this is where I need to stay, even though eventually I don't love it. I don't like what I'm doing. And, and I would say a large part of the population, global population, mm -hmm. finds themselves in that, or because they have a family, or because they, they've got a mortgage and all these other things in their lives, as we all do, right? Um, but they think that because I need the health benefits, I need to stay in this job that I don't like. 
Um, I've been fortunate to, to have that kind of rebel, as my wife calls it, a rule breaker. She calls me a rule breaker because if there's a way to do something better and more fun, I'm open to it and I'm exploring that and I'm jumping into it. And so um, if I find myself in a career path, uh, a job as I've had in the past where I wasn't enjoying it anymore, if I'm not enjoying it, I'm not being effective. If I'm not being effective, then I'm useless to my employer because I'm there begrudgingly. I'm there, I'm not putting out my best, right? I'm just there to collect a paycheck and for the benefits. And that's really does you no good. It does your employer no good. It does your colleagues and coworkers no good because you know they're there to work and produce. And if I'm not there, my heart isn't in it, then I'm walking away. And so essentially that's what I've done. Um, as a Marine, um, a lot of uh, opportunities uh, to, for me to stay and become a career Marine. I said, no, you know, I, I, I enjoyed this for the time that I had in it. And I decided to move on and experience life in a greater way. So from the Marine Corps, went into law enforcement, served five, almost six years in that as a uniformed officer and a deputy marshal in uh, north of Los Angeles, California. And then I decided, okay, I'm on to the next big thing because um, being in law enforcement, as you probably recognize, the world recognizes today is really, really difficult. Um, and today, more than ever, with all the pressures they have with, you know, the public eye on them, everything right. they, they do is subject to scrutiny and second guessing and those kinds of things. And, and not to protect the police in a blanket and say, you know, they are the Holy Grail because they make mistakes too. And the reason they do is because they're human. Yes. Uh, you're, putting hu you're putting humans in a position under pressure, under lots of stress, and you know they don't get a lot of the training and support that they need. And so constantly they're gonna go out and make mistakes and, and uh, hurt not only themselves, but the, the community as well. Right. So I was at a point where everything, Joseph, was, was either black or white in my life. You were either cop or you were the enemy. Um, always looking over your shoulder. Every time somebody yells out your last name, you turn around because mm. the only reason somebody calls you by your last name is because you either arrested them or you know them from jail or somewhere like that. Yes. Um, and so it was, it was just a negative, right? It wasn't soul filling experience. So I said, I'm out. And then I moved into law school. I, I went to law school, practiced 16 years in LA, mostly in entertainment, business, trial law. And, um, mm -hmm. uh, and the reason I did it is because I was pursuing a career as a modern day Julio Iglesias. That was, mm. that was, my, that was mm. my objective for going well, to law school. It wasn't it. so I could save the world. Mm. It was so I could open the doors um, that I couldn't open as one of a million struggling singer songwriters out there trying to get a deal, right? Mm. So somebody suggested, hey, you know, lawyers run the industry. So if you become a lawyer, now you're part of the inner circle. So yeah. I thought, yeah, and I could wear our money suits too. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So, so, so mm. I did that. So I went to law school, started past the bar the first time in California, went to, you know, started practicing law, became a partner in a firm. But throughout all that process, mm. I saw the, the seedy, the seedy inside of the entertainment industry, mm. the abuse, the taking advantage of the corruption, the, you know, just, you know, all the negative, negative side that, that you're hearing or that we've been hearing over the last year or two about Me Too movement in Hollywood and those kinds of things. Mm. I mean, it's been that way for decades yes. and decades, yeah. and it's way more pervasive than even the public knows. Mm. I've got to go to my grave with a lot of secrets, client mm. secrets. Mm. And so I decided that it wasn't a healthy environment anymore for me. I needed out. I needed to find a better way to serve the world, mm. um, better way to express myself and to be of service. And so that's why I've gone through all those changes. It's not, you know, for any other reason that I wanted always to move up and do something better, more fun. It's amazing. Quite, quite, quite amazing that whole journey, especially um, asking yourself that question. Is what I'm doing sustainable? Do I enjoy it? Am I adding value in, in this role? And now you're an entrepreneur, right. most part with the work you do with coaching and Working with your wife is, of course. W do you feel you're bred to be an entrepreneur? Do you feel that at early age, in early age, you had choices that you made that bred you, or is is it more the discipline that you've developed all those years being a marine, law enforcement, that 
at some point you got the formula being an entrepreneur, being, formula being an entrepreneur, but then discipline came in. I'm a big fan of structure. So I lead a community called Success Circles. This podcast will be streamed on our site, rulesforsuccess.com. The core facet of what we do is about structure creates freedom. So it's about building structures, creating boundaries, really having people awaken each day to their why, why they're doing what they're doing. Um, and I'll ask you what your why is very shortly to have an idea based on some of the things you've said so far. How important is structure in the midst of all of this? And do, do you, and, and were you bred to be an entrepreneur? It's a, it's a great question. And thanks for the, uh, for, for setting the table on that one, because it is very important. However, I don't think that I was quote unquote bred to be an entrepreneur. I think I found my way here um, much like when we go and try on clothes, right? Mm. And you, you try on things, and even though it says medium or large, whatever size we may be, mm. small, um, you know, we try things on, and some things are cut for you, and some things look baggy, and some are too tight, and some are too restrictive. The fabric doesn't. So much like that um, is how I found my way into entrepreneurship, is I tried the corporate environment. I tried the structured you know, where you're told what to do, when to do it, when to go on vacation, where you can go on vacation based on what they pay you, those kinds of things, what kind of car you drive based upon what they pay you. And because I found those things limiting, hmm. um, early on in my life, I found myself kind of, you know, boxed in and wanting out of this box. And so my, um, my mind um, became accustomed to the idea of, why does there have to be a box at all? And then I decided, screw the box. I never want to be in a box. Don't pen me in. Don't mm -hmm. label me. Don't. And so I've always resisted those things. And so I think, but, but it's been a learned thing. It's not that I um, grew up with entrepreneurial parents where they taught me and they influenced me and they, you know, exposed me to the world of entrepreneurship versus being, uh, you know, a corporate employee or um, something along those lines. It's something I learned. And I think it's something that we can all learn. But again, it's it, not everybody fits here. Not everybody fits over here. Not everybody does well over here. You are a um, engineer. And so you are process oriented. You are a master of process. I'm not a master of process. I'm a master of fun and vision. And I can see the big picture, but my, uh, shortcoming if you will in this arena is i don't have the i don't have the patience for the process mm. whereas my wife and one of the reasons we work so well mm. together we mm. we do so well together is because like you she is a process master as soon as i come up with an idea or someone brings us an idea especially a joint venture idea mm. First thing I do is look at the opportunities and who can we connect and those kinds of things, right? And let's make the phone calls right away. And yeah, let's set the meetings where my wife is, boom, stage one, stage two, stage three, yeah. phase one, phase two, process. This is what needs to happen first and then next and this. And she takes detailed notes and she sends the summaries to everybody. You know, It's great, I, great partnership. What's amazing. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But, but I don't roll that way. So it's wonderful, yeah. wonderful to have... Um, someone with that yes. skill set in my life um, to mm. help me achieve. And I also help her because, mm. right. And, and so we work off each other. You're, like that, you're, so. you're a visionary. So, I mean, going back to like, Gino, going to Gino Wickens work, traction, rocket fuel. He talks about uh, in a business, you're, you're a visionary or an integrator to be both in the same person is next to impossible. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be in a partnership where you're both, you have those, those, those hats is extraordinary. So uh, it's amazing to be able to share that in true partnership in your marriage where she's kind of the operationalizer or integrator, you're the visionary. And I mean, together combined, you can kind of direct to the future and make extraordinary choices, being able to kind of wear both hats, you know, Correct. at the same time. Yeah. Right. right. That's extraordinary. That's, 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 that's fantastic. Well, let's talk about, um, we can go so many directions with this conversation. And I, I, I know part of your brand, stevegsuccess.com, um, even our brand, Success Circles, Rules for Success. I'm fascinated. I was on a recent interview with you. I got to watch a recent interview with you. We talked about success and how kind of our founders, Thomas Jefferson particularly, kind of set us up for uh, um, a bit of failure or kind of a vicious cycle, you could say, <laughs> particularly with, with 
uh, um, a line in the Declaration of Independence. So talk about them. I'm fascinated by that. And when you when you when you when you're sharing about that, I'm like, you're absolutely right. And really, it really clarified something in me with the work we do. You know, around uh, chasing. Well, talk about that like, uh, for our audience watching right now. Talk about talk about it, please. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that up. And yes, I'm going to call out our founding father, Thomas Jefferson, because um, I don't know that he thought this through very well. And, uh, you know, I don't know the man, right? I don't know his family. And so I'm not um, denigrating him in any way, but I am calling out um, what I believe uh, has been one of the founding principles of this nation, which in turn has been ingrained in us since we've been little kids. We've been programmed with this idea that happiness, success, joy, is something that we have to go out and get, right? So I'm referring specifically to the line in the Declaration of Independence where he says we have the inalienable right, that word is often hard for me to say, inalienable right of life, liberty, and he didn't say happiness, right? He says the pursuit of happiness. And so think about this. If, if you have to pursue something foundationally, what does it mean? Means you're chasing after it. it. Means you're going after it, and uh, even it's before ongoing. that, even before that, why are we chasing after it? Uh, because we want it, of sorts. Because even uh, before that, um, because we don't have it. Yeah, we exactly. Have it. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. So mm. we don't have happiness. Mm. We don't have success. We don't have joy. Mm. Go out and get it. I, under, I think I understood what he was trying to say, but the way he said it is, like I said, it's been ingrained in us. you got to grow up and be successful. Become successful. Don't you want to become a success? Don't you want to mm. be successful, right? But let me ask you, Joseph, where mm. is that defined for all of us to understand, adopt, and go out there and implement? It's not, it's not to find anywhere there. Yeah. Nowhere. Mm. You define success different than I do. Then mm. does your wife, your children define success different? Mm. And it'll be different for them tomorrow. It'll be different for them when they're in high school and in right. college and dating and married and those kinds of things. So success is this moving element in our lives that we're yes. always seem to be chasing. Right? Oh, what are you doing? I'm just working on being successful. What do you, you know, dude, you know, wake up. Go out there, be a success, make money, be a success. Yeah. So where we've gotten after all these years, after Thomas Je Jefferson said this to us, is that in order for me to feel successful, I have to look at you, Joseph, and compare myself. And I have to mm. say, well, yeah. let's see, Joseph lives in a 3,000 square foot house. Mine's only 2,500. Therefore, conclusion, Joseph is doing better than I am in the household category. Um, Joseph's wife's a doctor. Um, mine's not. Joseph's doing better in the wife category. Joseph's got two lovely kids, three lovely kids, six lovely. I don't have kids. Joseph's doing better in the family department, right? Joseph's got a new pool. I don't have a new pool. My life sucks, right? And so this is why you have so many people that are seemingly outwardly highly accomplished, yeah. successful, if you will, living in nice homes, their kids are going to private school, they drive nice cars, they wear top of the line clothes, they take, you know, wonderful vacations every, every year and a couple of times a year. Yet you talk to these people, some of the highest achievers in the world, mm. and they are the most dissatisfied. Why? Yeah. Because they're comparing themselves to always someone has better. And in this world, there will always be someone that's younger, that's better looking, that's faster, that's stronger, that can make more money. You know, you look at Mark Zuckerberg, a multimillionaire at 19 years old, invented Facebook. How many 19 years old do you know that they wanted to end their lives because they couldn't be Zuckerberg? Wow. Or because their parents were saying, why can't you be more like Mark? Yeah. Right? That's yeah. successful. You working a job at in and out Burger is not successful, right? Well, that's not true. That's not true. No, not at all. Su mm. Mm. Success is nothing than a label that we put on it's an event is what it is, Joseph, I've concluded. Success is an event, meaning that whatever you intend to do, it either happens, the result is produced the way you wanted it to. Sometimes it's an accidental result that you get and you like it, but you either get the result that you want or not. So you either, the event, the, the intent is successful or not. Like you and I intended to 
be on this call at noon uh, mountain, 2 p.m. Eastern. Mm. And we did it. Mm. We succeeded in getting on this call and yes. launching this interview, right? Yes. Yay for us. Yes. Okay. Had, had we intended it and for whatever reason it didn't happen, the event failed. Yeah. So success is nothing more than the flip side of the coin of failure. Yeah. Mm. But yet talking about failure, so many of us view ourselves or we're taught again to view ourselves as failures. Like, oh, you're such a failure because you lost your job. You lost your wife. You, you know, you lost mm. your money. You gambled it, whatever, right? You're mm. just such a failure. And so we go through life thinking, I didn't make the baseball team when I was five years old. I'm such a failure. You know, your dad tells you, you didn't score that winning touchdown. You had it in your hand, but mm. you were goofing off and you got the ball, uh, you know, knocked out of your hands. You're such a failure. This is what we tell our kids at right. five, six, seven years old. Right. So they grew up thinking that they are that. Yeah, and, their here's, identity. Mm. and here's how to remove it. Most of us have been in a car accident or we've fallen down or we've fallen over on a bicycle or we've had accidents. But yet, I don't think a single one of us walk away from a car accident and go, oh, I'm such an accident. We don't do that, do we? No, we don't, not at all. No. no, we say, I was in an accident. Yeah. We say, I caused an accident. We say, you know, I was involved in an accident. Mm. I saw an accident, I went, you know, whatever. Mm. But we don't say, I'm an accident, even mm. though we were in it hmm. so much. Why, why should we say that we are failures because something we intended to do didn't go the way we wanted it to. Yeah. And so when we remove that attachment and hmm. we can see that success is an event, just like failure is an event. Ah, now we can step back and just be exactly. and accomplish yeah. a lot more without the stress. Yeah. And fail too often and enjoy failure perhaps, you know, and yeah, I, I get that. It's fantastic. I, I, it's brilliant. I, I love, part of what we do in our community is every day is a game, right? Mm -hmm. Tomorrow's a whole new game. So you get an opportunity to learning from the previous game. So if we do that over time, life can compound to reward you. And um, so the complete alignment to that. We, we encourage people to go out and be bold, to fail, fail often. And um, it's a complete alignment with that. It's really, really brilliant. I love, I love the whole framework of that, how you, how you just for audience you're watching this, it's really seeing success and failure as different sides of the same event. When you see it as that, there's less attachment. You can move forward and go out and fail again because every successful or every extraordinary entrepreneur, any entrepreneur who's built whatever they've built, chances are they've failed more times than they've succeeded more than likely. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Got it. Got it. So, so what, so you teach relation mastery, you, you teach relation mastery. What does that mean in the context of business? Uh, great question. Thank you for that. Uh, relationship mastery. Well, I, primarily my teaching philosophy centers around self mastery, how you think, how you decide, mm -hmm. and how you act based on those thoughts and decisions. Communications mastery, how you speak to yourself, and then how you speak to the world, whether you're on a public speaking stage or on a podcast, etc and relationship mastery, how you relate to yourself and how you relate to the world around you in business as well as in personal. And these are the three elements. These are three components of what I believe is a remarkable life because absent one of these, if one of these is broken or failing or weak, you're going to see the uh, negative results or negative impact in the, entire, in the entirety of what it is that you're doing. Because what you and I are doing right now is relating. You, what you and I did when we first met is related to each other. Mm. How did we relate to each other? Did I come to you and I say, hey, Joseph, nice to meet you. Listen, I got this great product and service and it's yeah. for people just like you. And you should buy it, man. Here's my stuff. Here's my marketing material. Go to my website, buy my program. Did I do that? Not at all. No, yeah. no. And what would have happened had I done that to somebody like Joseph Varghese? He probably would have said, you know what, Steve? Um, let's talk some other time, you know, it's nice to have met you and uh, we'll see you down the, down the road a bit, right? Um, I probably would have not gotten very far with you or with anybody else if I approached him in that way. And so from a business context, we've lost the ability, I think, partly through the internet because the internet has made it so, so easy for you to reach out and speak to Mark Zuckerberg or to Elon Musk or to anybody, right? You just got to find their email and send it to them. And as a result, we've kind of lost the art of how to relate to one another in business. 
and we are more transactional than we are what I call relational, authentically relational, genuinely relational. Like, I truly want to know about Joseph and what you're doing in the world to see first, not whether he wants to buy my book or product or attend my speaking program, but first I want to find out what can I do for you? In other words, what are you looking for? What resources are you looking for? What doors do you need open that perhaps I can lead or I can assist in having those open for you? If I do that, then I become your BFF, right? Then I become your best friend. You go, oh, man, Stevie, whatever you need, brother, I'm there. And that's how I built my relationships over the last number of years. I can't even tell you how many wonderful things have happened yes. because you're first leading with a desire to serve genuinely, yes. not because if I do this for you, Joseph, you did this for me, right? Yeah. That's transactional. Exactly. And, and so I think that that has gotten lost in business. And one of my uh, goals right mm -hmm. now is to bring that back and to teach people how to connect genuinely, authentically, leading with value. And yes. a lot of people think, well, I have value and my business have value, my products have value. So that means lead with that. No, it doesn't mean lead with that. You have to lead with value, not of something to you, but for something to Joseph and for yes. each individual person that you're trying to make a connection with. Yes. And so um, uh, I, I've created a program um, in, in the Spanish language for the Be Connected community, which is a uh, community of professionals um, that are there only to do business. There's no cat videos. There's no, you know, photos of what I had for lunch yesterday or what, um, you know, Miley Cyrus is wearing on the beach today, you know, like we see on Facebook and everywhere right. else. This right. is a platform exclusively for people that want to do business. It's invitation only. And I get to serve. This is so much fun for me. Mm. I get to serve as one of the master coaches where I get mm. to create training programs for these professionals. And one of the first things that I'm programs that I'm creating because we're coming together to do business now mm -hmm. and the program is called you're connected now what mm -hmm. so it's 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 Love one it. thing to connect with Joseph or mm -hmm. with John and Mary or Michael mm -hmm. but now what what do you say you know how do you lead what do you offer those kinds of things and my objective again is to retrain because I think we knew at one point but to retrain the professionals that knew how to connect and communicate and to train anew the newly upcoming professional and entrepreneurs that all they've experienced is 140 characters. Hey, right. Joseph, great to see you on LinkedIn. I see you're an engineer. I'm an engineer. Listen, um, here's what I'm doing. Go buy it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's eliminate that. Right. Right. Let's build true connection. Right. And uh, bring, bring it back more. Brilliant, pl brilliant platform. So it's big connected with a K. So B-E-E-K-O-N-N-E-C-T. B-E-E. -E, B-E-E. -E. Yes. Like, like a little bumblebee. And that's just their logo and their slogan is, is B. And, and I asked the founders, you know, how that came to be. And uh, the reasoning is that the B, the bumblebee, the actual little animal bumblebee is in large part what keeps the whole world together and what right. connects the world when they go and pollinate one flower and then they take that and they use that to pollinate another flower, et cetera, et cetera. It keeps the whole world going. And so that's part of the reasoning that they came up with this bee connected process really? because um, yeah. we, we can do that. We can serve the world. We can do great things if we just are connected to each other a little bit more um, in an intentional way, in an authentic way, and we can do great things. You can find great business partners there. You can find great clients, all yes. kinds of things. There's a, a game I played at an event years ago called the Beehive. Okay, we have, Beehive. We, we have different you have different groups, and you have a queen bee, and you have a, like a worker bee. So the queen bee kind of goes around tells a, tells the worker bee what she needs, and the worker bee would go from group to group to group, like sharing about the queen bee what the what the queen bee needs. I mean, it's it's different concept from what you're saying, and uh, in the sense of that, there's no value added. It was just basically the worker bee going out to different other hives <laughs> at this networking event. Um, and um, asking, share, basically enrolling people for the queen bee, essentially. And then the next worker bee, the group would go with the next, the next group and so forth. Really fascinating concept. Um, I, I like it. I, you I, should create a board game out of it or something because it is a brilliant idea. I mean, you know, and it's a fun way to not only create engagement, but to get people thinking. Yes. 
you know, let's follow the rules of nature. What is nature doing? How does nature do it to create all this beauty and splendor pollination, around right? us Cross every day, right? Exactly. Yes. That's how, so why not follow the same steps as nature does? Nature's the best teacher out there. It's always been mm. available to teach us. It continuously teaches us if we only think to observe. But I love that mm. game that you created. And I think that you should mm. rebirth it, package it, and bring it on to be connected because we need people like you. We need thought leaders like you. We need visionaries mm. like you, people that execute like you. Um, and, and just have a heart to serve others in business. So, And it, 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 it's, not my, it's not my game. It was at an event I went to years ago it's through this entrepreneurial group. Um, the founder's Bernie that he passed away a few months ago, actually. And, Bernie Dorman. Uh, exactly. So he's a creator of that game, essentially, as part of an entrepreneurial group. Of, he, uh, it's called CEO Space, I think it's CEO called. CEO Space, right. Yeah, it's a CEO yeah. Space event. Yeah. Got it. Fantastic. So what, what are you currently working on? What's, what's next? What's on the horizon for you? Well, um, beyond the, the Be Connected platform and, and serving them and just bringing my A game to them, um, I'm in the process of doing a lot of uh, JV deals with my wife. We, we recently, this is a real cool one, um, we recently connected with a national lending organization that provides support to small business owners who at this time, you know, with the COVID pandemic and shutdowns and those kinds of things and with the reduction or inability for many business owners to get access to the, uh, the mm -hmm. funding, the little bit of funding that was available. Mm -hmm. um, this is a great opportunity for them. And so Alethea and I are always in the process of, of looking for uh, vendors with uh, b that can benefit the small business community mm -hmm. and um, we bring them to organizations like Be Connected or to some of the other partners that we have and so that's how we keep ourselves busy. It's, I'm mm -hmm. creating content, uh, recording videos, turning my home into a video studio um, and just you know having fun every, every, yeah. every, every step of the way. We, we look mm -hmm. to have fun. It's really awesome that you can design a life where you can do that on, ongoing at least, doing what you do, connecting people together and waking up each day knowing some of those connections have actually um, led to something extraordinary. More right. opportunity, more revenue, maybe even a relationship, a marriage perhaps, just simply out of connecting people together. It's extraordinary and very, yeah. very, and very fulfilling too. I mean, I experience that on a daily basis. Um, what's, what's a ritual that you, that you uh, partake in each day, maybe a morning routine or evening routine that you feel allows you to Really maximizing your day to really enjoy your day more. What, what's what's one of your rituals each day? Waking up. Okay, <laughs> it is that is indeed a good ritual. Particularly <laughs> we're grateful for it. Yeah, I, yeah I, I, get, I get I get where, I get where you're going and, and with that. Yeah, waking um, up waking my wake, waking up is truly my only ritual, and that's my only objective is to wake up mm. the next morning because everything else is fluid. Um, I don't have, you know, for example, I, I know that my, uh, my mentor, Tony Robbins, he has rituals where he gets up and he's, you know, jumping up and down mm -hmm. and he's, you know, doing this and deep breathing, ex you know, and jumping some, in a, in a, in a ice cold, uh, pond like Wim Hof, yeah, exactly. like Wim Hof and, yes. and those guys. Yeah. I, I don't do that. Like I said, I'm a rule breaker. And so I take every day to me is a different experience. Um, sometimes I roll out the opposite side of the bed just for fun, right? Mm. Um, sometimes I'll stay in bed a little bit longer than usual. Sometimes mm. I get up way earlier than usual. It's just every day is a different experience. I don't yes. like, I, that's one thing, I don't like routine. I'm not a routine kind of guy. And so I see rituals are important, but not for everybody. Not everybody mm. likes that. Not everybody needs it or desires it. So mm. uh, yeah, so my only ritual is waking up. Yeah. But I hear a lot of variety in the things you do. And I, I, I've, I've also talking to you in the whole reinvention, right? The whole nature of pivoting during these unique times. Well, maybe we can go into that soon also, how people can pivot into these unique times. You're, you're, you're constantly um, being engaged, you know, engaging yourself, getting uncomfortable. And I find that so important. And, and decades, for many people, decades go by. They, they, they blink their eyes, a decade goes by. Not much happens, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, you know, and, and it's sad sometimes. These are my friends from high school, college, and they, you know, 20 years later, and not much has changed. They're kind of yeah. in their own little village in some area of New York City, perhaps, or, or Long Island, and not much has changed. And um, so I'm, I'm very inspired 
but your willingness to continually kind of engage yourself, to be bold, um, make pivots. What are what do you feel some 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 uh, pivots or some choices people can make now, particularly during this unique time where we're in this pr perhaps pressure cooker is one way of looking at it. You know, we're we're several months into it right now, and last final third of the year is coming up now. What are some choices, or what can people do to really embrace the pivot during this unique time? Other than, of course, having a conversation with you, you know, StevieGSuccess.com. What are what what's something that people can do? Uh, that's a great question, Joseph. Thanks for asking. And my response to that is, you know, it really it, there's no one thing. Mm -hmm. In other words everybody's in their own situation, different circumstance. Some circumstances look alike. And so you can see what someone else has done and say, well, they did it and they did this successfully. And therefore I'm going to do that. But I'm not going to pretend that I can speak for everybody because not everybody wants to pivot, right? Not everybody wants to. And so if you don't want to, then there's no need to. Don't put the pressure on yourself that you should just because you see the rest of the world. If pivoting. If you are happy where you're at, if you like the job, or if you like being without a job, whatever the case may be, if you are satisfied in that state, in your current circumstances, and you don't want to change, don't change. Don't change. When you're ready to change, and you want to change, then look for ways to change. So don't, don't feel like, like it's a, a have to for you. Okay, you, you have that permission not to do anything. Remain just where you are. Now, for those of you that do want to change and for those of you that are angry and dissatisfied and truly upset with your circumstances and you want to change, I don't know all your situations. You're probably in a job. Maybe you have a business. Maybe you're thinking of going into business. Maybe you're a consultant or coach or speaker. There's so much variety in terms of how you can take your current skill set and pivot into a way that is going to uh, create more magic for you in the marketplace during this time where everybody finds themselves locked down. So the first thing I'll suggest to you, and I know, Joseph, you love this because it's something that you've done, is to reflect on what it is that you absolutely love to do. In other words, what would you do with your time even if they didn't pay you for it? Mm. Okay? Mm. Question number one. Mm. What would you do with your time even if they didn't pay you for it? Chances are that whatever it is you decide that is, whether it's rebuilding bicycles or you know, um, refurbishing cars or cooking or writing or whatever. What is it that you love to do that if no one paid you to do it, you would still find a way to do it anyway? Because that's really where you belong. That's where your joy is. Okay. Mm. Then ask, with, with respect to this, let's say it's cooking. Okay. What is it that the world reads, needs right now mm. in the realm of cooking mm. that I can offer? Don't say, what is it that I want to offer the world? That's important. Mm. But more important is what does the world need mm. now? Okay, mm. there's a lot of people at home. Mm. A lot of people are looking for new and healthy ways to feed their families and themselves, new simple meals. And so if you can come up with a program that offers people simple, easy tips, cooking, and you can show them on video, et cetera. Now you've got a program, now you've got a product, and now you've got an audience out there that you've already identified that is looking for this stuff. So here's a way that you can pivot with one of your talents and skills. And so you can take anything that you're doing, anything that you love and are passionate about, and just ask yourself those questions. Yes. What does the world need? As it, um, Bert Bacharach, years ago, wrote a song, What the World Needs Now. Mm. Uh, Dionne Warwick is Love, mm. Sweet Love, right? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people recognize that song. So ask yourself, what does the world need now? Because it was different than it was a year ago, yeah. right? Now you've got more people at home. So just think, what does the world need now that everybody's at home? They need entertainment for the kids. They need things to do as couples. They need um, more activities, healthy activities. They need better eating. So there's always something that we can do. And right. if you can't figure it out, I'm happy to jump on a call with you. And I'm sure Joseph is too. So call Joseph first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just call Joseph and call say, us, yeah. dude, I want to be part of your success circle so I can learn how to pivot. <laughs>
Awesome, my friend. Fantastic. I mean, lots of value here today. I, I, I love all of that too. What does the word, world need? Connect with that deeply. And um, yeah, don't force yourself, right? Just, just, just do what you enjoy doing, right? This is about building sustainability in your life in the future and perhaps creating impact in the world too at the same time by asking yourself that question. This is great. It's so really, really enjoyed this interview. And uh, thanks for sharing us through your morning ritual, waking up. Really appreciate that from a, from a creative mind like yourself. Um, any, any final closing words as, as we, as we, as we uh, complete our podcast today? Uh, final closing words. Um, I just like to let all of you know that, um, you know, we're going back to this, the idea of Thomas Jefferson and chasing success. One of the things that we are after is also reaching our potential. Mm -hmm. Some of you may say, I'm, I'm just, I want to reach my potential. And I want to tell you, no, you don't want to reach your potential. Because if potential is perfection, is potential is the ultimate of what you can do as a parent, as a lover, as a husband, as a girlfriend, as a student, as an athlete, as a musician, if your potential is the absolute max, the best that you can ever do, you don't want to reach that. Because once you do reach it, where do you go from there? Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. You always want to continue growing and evolving and developing. And that's what life is all about. Yes. It's not about being perfect. Yes. It's not about reaching your potential. It's about living to your capacity. Yeah. If you live to your capacity, in other words, what am I able to do right now with everything that I have, with all the resources, with all the friends, with this limited amount of money, whatever the case may be, what can I do with this? Do something great with that and you'll watch that expand it expands, it expands, it expands. And you'll continue this expansion and growth and evolution in your life, in your finances, in your marriage, in your relationships, in your career, in your business, always, always growing. But don't ever wish that you're at the top. Beautiful. Really, really well said. Very powerful wisdom, my friend. Uh, Steve Gallegas, uh, steviegsuccess.com. Access him, access this, access this, um, interview at rulesforsuccess.com. My team will also mind map it. It'll be available. If you want to get the summary of it, you can open it at one link. Thanks so much, Steve. I appreciate this. Enjoy the wonderful hike with your wife this coming weekend. And uh, hopefully we'll talk soon. Thank you, Joseph. I appreciate you.